the hypertime shadow, what I'm calling the hypertime shadow, seems to indicate a better way to understand what light is because of something that can be observed about its supersymmetrical behavior that is probably emergent property from what the quantum mechanic particle physicists refer to as photon spin entanglement. And so what, what I'm pointing to is a sh are, are shadows um, or wavelength inconsistencies in the energy that is emitted by the sun. In other words, if you look at the wavelengths of energy that come from the sun, that appear to emanate from the sun, you can, you can uh, notice that there are sunspots that, that move in this 11-year cycle. And then you can also notice that those spots are actually emitting an energy that is of a higher frequency than our visible spectrum. And that's why that they appear black to us. And then if you look at that higher frequency, if you image the sun in that higher frequency spectrum, you'll notice that these come from active regions, regions on the sun that are, are undulating in the higher frequency uh, bands. And they, there's this concept of the magnetic knot, this polarity that uh, can be also imaged on the sun uh, with, with the magnetic density image. And the, uh, the magnetic density uh, points to the, the, the fact that there are these poles uh, that exist on the sun in which this, these undulations occur. These uh, coronal mass ejections have a sort of polarity to them that, uh, that, that emerges from the, the nature of the magnetic knot. And this is the conventional science. This is the conventional understanding of it. Now, astrotometry takes, takes that and sits it aside because of, of something that's been observed about the supersimilarity or the self-similarity of the, uh, of the um, universe and <clears throat> understands it from the perspective that there are uh, component relationships between matter between the physical structure that composes everything on our planet and the energy forms that are outside of it. And so in other words, um, the concept that the Earth is moved through time by the other energy forms that are in the rest of the cosmos is one of the central concepts in astrotometry. That's called the chronocentric model. And what is noticed by this other observation of the supersimilarity is that there isn't really a center. And so the chronocentric in the higher dimensional understanding uh, changes to hypersymmetric. And so it goes, uh, the, 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 well, in progression it would be like the geocentric model, the heliocentric model, the chronocentric model, and then the hypersymmetric model, which is the, which is the astrotometric HD, the, the hyperdimensional model. And this is, this is what is happening on the subatomic level. If you look at if you look, look at the, the the particle physics, I'll go ahead and link in the comment um, a link for uh, supersymmetry. Um, this th so this this theory is uniting that supersymmetrical understanding of the nature of reality with our concept of what's in the cosmos, and so. <clears throat> When we move, when, it, when anything moves, other things move in synchronicity. And this, you have to set aside the concept of original cause or of, of absolute cause or, or cause and effect to, to recognize that in a sense, there is, it's, it's a chain or it's a circle or a cycle. <clears throat> and there's two different ways to look at this. Um, in a sense, you could, you could say that the sun is producing, the, you could say that that active region or that that spot is actually responsible for the presence in some way of that object. Uh, cause and effect, the causal relationships, the, the way that we're thinking about uh, those interconnections, those interrelations, has to change because of our understanding of time that is shifting in, in astrotometry. How matter moves through time is treated in astrotometry. The concept that 
we normally have about the nature of time is that it's this separate thing, but it's actually very intricately related to physical manifestation. The nature of time itself is, uh, is required for the concept of cause and effect. And so if there's something about time that we're not seeing, if there's something about time that we don't understand, then that what we're, we're thinking about cause and effect has to change. And so um, astrotometry points this out. Astrotometry demonstrates this in a very big way. You know, it's basically the same types of observations that are, are being made uh, in, inside particle accelerator <clears throat> Are being made um, in in the heavens can can be can be made by paying attention to what is happening with the movement of light. What is orbital inconsistency exactly? Well, um, you could talk it about as being elliptical, but what I'm talking about more is is whether or not it deviates from uh, what a circle is and whether or not the velocity is is consistent. So there's, there's two things with consistency there. A, a perfect orbit, a perfectly consistent orbit would be exactly the same velocity all the time orbiting around in a, compl in a complete circle, a perfect circle. That would be a completely consistent orbit. And if the object has an inconsistent orbit, uh, the per the, a, perfectly, a perfectly inconsistent orbit would be uh, moving very, very quickly towards, towards directly towards the center of the sun. Uh, that would be a that would be a completely inconsistent orbit, and so it's it's this relationship between the manifestation of physical matter and the uh, the luminosity we see emanating from the sun that is the that is the uh, the indication here.